friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 28th, and it is a cold and rainy morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. I'm just checking the date. It is indeed January 28th. I get a little confused sometimes. I don't know if you can hear that, but the rain is really coming down. Uh, you'll probably hear the sump pump going off, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, off to a slow start this morning, not because uh, I'm moving very slow, but I just had a lot of stuff to catch up on because all the stuff I normally do on Saturday mornings I didn't do yesterday because I went to the uh, to the tool swap and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Uh, but anyway, I'm caught up. It's a little bit later than usual, but here we are and I have my uh, Talbert Linier Britannia Squat Bulldog with some Haunted Bookshop. I'm going to have to refill this because I've been smoking it while I was getting the video ready, but hey, you don't mind a refill. So, a couple of things I want to talk about today. I'm going to get into the tool swap and tell you how the, how the day went and everything yesterday, but the first thing is uh, I found out about something on Friday night that uh, if you saw the title card, you probably understand at least some of what I'm going to talk about that just really yeah, has been... I don't know, I just feel like I've been, been punched in the gut over this whole thing. It, it's just a, a terrible thing that happened. So there's a pipe carver in uh, Greece, in Cyprus. Uh, his name is Yanos uh, Kokinos. I may be pronouncing his name wrong. Maybe it's Yanos. Yanos Kokinos. Um, carves some really nice pipes. I'll, I'll show you some images in a moment. Actually, let me, let me just show you Yanos. Uh, so there he is. And uh, there's some images from his. Sorry, right, gotta figure around here a bit. Of course, the images will not advance now for some reason. Anyway, that is Yanos. Ah, oh, there we go. This is uh, from his webpage. So you can get an idea of the kind of uh, pipes he carves, and I will link to his webpage below. But you'll notice several of those have it was stolen written on it. Um, and that is because this poor guy had his shop broken into and he had all of his tools um, and all of his finished pipes, plus some that were in, in the works, were stolen. So this guy, he's a professional pipe carver, that's what he does for a living, and overnight his livelihood was taken from him. Now, he's going to rebuild, he can rebuild. Uh, it's not going to be cheap because it's going to reinvest in everything. Um, but, you know, this is a terrible thing. You know, it's one thing to break into somebody's house and take some stuff from them, but to take their livelihood from them, that's just a whole new level of disgusting. So I found out about this on Friday night. Uh, Phil Rivera. Uh, brought it up and, and sent me some links and stuff. Uh, there's a gentleman on Instagram, uh, Richard Matthew Madley, who is uh, Mad Mad Pipes, and on Instagram he is Mad underscore Pipes. And I will put links below to Richard's uh, Instagram feed, to Yanos's Instagram feed, as well as Yanos's uh, website. <clears throat> and there's going to be a fundraiser, a fundraising raffle. Um, the details have not been worked out yet. The details will be worked out in, in early February according to Richard and I will make a special video to talk about that and how you can get involved if you'd like to uh, to try to help this fellow out. Uh, Yanis also on his webpage uh, you might have noticed there's a pipe and if you see the title card at the end you'll see it again. Uh, there's a pipe that's called the um, Oh, I forget what he called it, but it's 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 a raffle pipe basically. And the way that works is you buy a ticket for uh, I think it's twenty seven dollars U.S. It's twenty five euros and it's twenty seven dollars if I got that right. So you buy a ticket and then you're entered in a raffle to win this pipe. Um, again, it's not about winning the pipe; it's about helping a guy who just lost his job uh, essentially. And uh, it's not like he can start looking through the one ads for you know, pipe carver wanted. 
So anyway, if you'd like to help out Giannis, um, you can go to his webpage right now and buy a, a, a ticket for the, the pipe raffle. Or you can wait until um, Richard has the details worked out. And again, follow him on Instagram. Follow Yanos on Instagram. Follow Phil Rivera on Instagram. I'll put a link to him as well. And, uh, and on YouTube, you, you probably are subscribed to Phil. And uh, follow me, and I'll, I'll update you as I get the information on this uh, fundraising raffle that uh, Mad Pipes is putting together. So... I hope we can help this guy out. Uh, I just can't imagine being in that situation, you know. And it, I think, what bothers me most is that a human being or a group of human beings knew that they were breaking into a man's workshop and took everything. You know, they didn't just take the finished pipes. They could have sold those probably for you know, quite a nice profit. They didn't just take a couple of tools. They took everything. Um, you know, even down to things like uh, laser engravers and stuff like that that he was using to label his pipes. Uh, they cleaned them out. And that's, it takes a particular kind of person to do something like that to someone. And I feel horrible that such people exist in this world. And I fear that they're becoming more common rather than less common. So that's all we'll say about that because I could get into a really depressing spiral if I keep that up. But I will say this. I hope they catch him and do horrible things to him. <laughs> so, setting that aside, I, I am smoking Haunted Bookshop today. Um, I was going to smoke the tobacco of the week from Friday night, which is the um, Peter Heinrich uh, Grand Cru number no. two. Uh, really good tobacco. Uh, Bill sent me three three samples and this was the third one. I enjoyed it on Friday, but to be honest, I was feeling a bit under the weather on Friday and I'm still not 100%. And I didn't really quite feel like uh, trying to give you my impressions of that tobacco today. I don't think I do a good job of it. Also, I'm not going to have a live stream next Friday, uh, this coming Friday, I should say. And that's because uh, my wife has asked me to do some things, and uh, that's what I do. So, next Sunday will be uh, another opportunity to review the, uh, the Peter Heinrich blend, so I will do that. <clears throat> you can hear my voice is actually drifting away as, as I speak. But I did feel <clears throat> well enough, and I'm not I'm not like actively sick. I think it's just the the carryover from what I had, which was a very short cold. Odd. So I did feel well enough yesterday to go to the <clears throat> Midwestern Tool Collectors Association Area P Tool Swap, and it was a great time. It it always is. I. Uh, picked up a few things which I'll show you just because I like to brag but I do want to show you some pictures from this and tell you a little bit about what what went on let me see if I can get this thing to to work for me ah okay so there is a um, wide view of the show I didn't count the number of tables but there were quite a few uh, all of those tables are people selling items, and it was just an amazing array of things. I think I've got a picture here of hammers. Yes, <laughs> just a small selection of this table that was full of hammers. And, you know, it's funny. I, over the years, I've learned that, you know, hammers are really interesting, and there's a lot of different types of hammers. Uh, for most of my life, I thought that a hammer was just a heavy piece of metal on the end of a piece of wood. I, I did not realize the variety and, and the specialization of these tools. Uh, designed for, for tasks, very unique tasks, uh, you know, setting the hoops on a barrel or uh, pounding in the nails on the bottom of the shoe if you're a cobbler, you know, and, and, and the shape and the weight and everything is specifically designed for that task. Really amazing. And people go crazy collecting these. You know, there are guys that have thousands of hammers in their collections. 
I'm not a hammer collector. I just appreciate looking at them. And uh, one of the neat things about this show is you get to pick this stuff up and, and look at it and, you know, examine it. And, you know, as I walk around, I hear guys talking and, and they're saying things like, you know, well, you know, Jenkins didn't publish that patent until 1910, so that has to be German made. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that kind of a tool collector. I spend most of my time picking things up and thinking, now what the heck is that? But it, it's fun. It's really a great deal of fun. So I enjoy it. I enjoy learning from the folks that are there uh, when I can and just seeing all the good stuff. So a uh, couple of highlights. There are tables uh, of exhibits. So these are people that are not selling things but just showing off their, their, their collections or parts of their collections. And this was one that I thought was really cool. This was a... Um, a kit that was sold by Bethlehem Steel for casting 350-pound uh, anvils. And so it included the wooden form and all the sprues and everything that would be needed for, for casting these. And he had the original box for it, and it, it just was really, really neat. And here you can see the, the wooden form for the anvil. Uh, yeah, it, this, was, this was fascinating to look at. To have all that stuff gathered together in, in one place because, you know, it's probably pretty rare that you find the complete kit for something like that. Uh, another table that was really interesting was this one uh, that was titled Wrench Oddities. And uh, I do like looking at old wrenches. Uh, I've got a couple of them. I'm, again, not a collector of wrenches, but um, I appreciate them. I like some of the, the mechanisms, how the mechanisms evolved over the years. And these are all fairly old style wrenches, but there was one in the center that I just thought was incredibly cool. Yes, that's actually a wrench with a gun grip, pistol grip. Um, it looks really odd. So the idea is you hold it by the, like you would hold a gun, and your thumb and forefinger wrap around that little knurled knob that you see right around where the trigger would be. And by turning that back and forth, you actually move the, the lower jaw of the wrench in and out. And I picked this up and I tried it, and it's surprisingly comfortable to do that. I mean, this would work, and it might be kind of handy at times when, you know, how many times have you tried to get a wrench into a spot and it's not set right, so you have to take it back out and twirl the little thing and then try to get it back in. And it, this would allow you to put it in wide, slip it over the the nut and just dial it in. So that, that's kind of a neat feature. Um, of course, there's reasons why we don't have wrenches like that today, I'm sure. Uh, another, yes, Stanley squares and bevels, of course. Uh, and this is something I do have a weakness for. And I'll be showing you an example of a Stanley uh, sliding bevel gauge that I got as well as some files that you hear clinking in the background right now as I move them around because I forgot to move them earlier. So let me bring back me. Hope you enjoyed those pictures. Um, I also I had a great lunch at a place called Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. Fantastic place. Uh, if you want to see those pictures, you got to go to Instagram. I'm not going to show you pictures of food. Uh oh. Speaking of pictures of food, uh, Android has this new feature, well, it's, it's not entirely new, but they, they amped it up a bit by adding AI, where it will go through your photos on your phone and it will generate memories for you. It also does it if you're, if you're, if you're backed up to the cloud, like Google Drive or something like that, it'll, it'll tap into those as well. And it'll build these with what it calls memory. Uh, displays and you click on it and it plays music and it shows you pictures so you might get for example uh, your trip to York and it'll uh, so the other day it, it, yeah, actually yesterday it sent me a, a notification that it had created a new memory for me and it was called Cheers and what it was was a mm, 15 minute or so long video of pictures of beer <laughs> I thought maybe, maybe when Google sends you something like that, you know you got a problem.
So, the, oh, there's one other thing. These are my two treasures from yesterday. The first one is kind of goofy, but this is a, it's a reproduction, but it is Miller Falls Catalog number 74, which was originally published in, I can't see that, 1878, I believe. And uh, it's just, it's just a really cool, you know, give you some ideas of, and I am a big fan of Miller Falls tools. My first, my first used tool that I ever bought was a Miller Falls plane, uh, comparable to the, to the Stanley um, number five. And that's one of the planes that I used to build my workbench and, you know, it was a tool that I had to, 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 to clean up and, 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 and fet and get ready to, to work properly. I had to flatten the sole and everything. And I love that plane. And I've bought other Miller Falls planes. I've got some Miller Falls drills. I, I really like Miller Falls stuff uh, because I've got that connection to it. And I don't have a lot of it, but anytime I see something from Miller Falls, I, I seriously consider buying it. Uh, I also think about whether or not I need it. And, you know, but, uh, so anyway, getting this, even though it's a reproduction from the 1990s, it's it's really cool to, to have that and to be able to, to read through it. Uh, I also got this little beauty. This is a Stanley number 18 sliding bevel gauge. These are unique in that they've got the locking knob on the bottom rather than up here. Uh, where you would normally find it and they lock really tight so you just turn that and you can change the angle slides and you set your angle and lock it and that thing is rock solid it will not move so I really like these I've been wanting one of these for a long time I've uh, been looking for a, one in good condition for gosh probably close to 10 years now and uh, there was a table with four of them, and I thought, oh man, this is my chance. So I, so I sorted through them and found the, the best one and went home a happy man. So, and that is a tool that I will use uh, a lot. So, not a collecting item, uh, although it is in really excellent condition. Um, see the Stanley number 18 there, and on this side you've got the Made in USA. Very nice tool. And of course, I got some files. There's one more here. I know I'm banging them together, sorry. Uh, nothing terribly special. Some Nicholson Old Stock. Uh, there's a couple of other brands in here. But uh, these are good, in good condition. They're users. And a dollar each. I can't. I've got a problem when it comes to files. I don't think you can ever have enough, and uh, at a dollar each, I just couldn't pass these up. So they will be used. Um, also, file, you know, some people say you can chemically sharpen files and all that. I find that it just doesn't work that well. So when a file reaches the end of its life, it's it's a disposable tool. So it's good to keep extras around. Yeah, so all in all, it was a really good day. I uh, I left later than I expected because it was very foggy in the morning and I just didn't want to drive in the fog but before the sun came up. Uh, I did leave a little bit before sunrise because it was uh, the fog was lifting. But I didn't get to the show until about 8.30. I was planning to get there at 7 originally, which is when they open. And the show runs from 7 to 11. And then there's a break. At 11 o'clock, they, they start... Uh, allowing you to view the auction items and then at one o'clock there's an auction and I did look at the auction items uh, which was a lot of fun because there was some really rare stuff there there were some really nice tool chests uh, the only thing I would have bid on was one of these tool chests which was too big to put in my car so I thought well <laughs> save myself some money there and they probably went for a lot more than I was willing to pay anyway uh, yeah and then I, I Headed home uh, after I looked at the auction items and realized I wasn't going to 
bit on anything. I, I hit it out. I stopped at this cheddar scratch for for lunch, and uh, then then made my way back home. I was home by two thirty, I think. So, all in all, a nice day. I uh, really really enjoyed myself. Paid for it today because I was well, I was tired last night, and then today I had to do all the things that I would normally do on a Saturday morning. But I am caught up. I've made a video. I probably have babbled for much longer than I should have, and I'm about to completely lose my voice. So, <laughs> with that, I am going to draw this to a close. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday and looking forward to a great week ahead. Remember, there'll be links below for all the stuff I talked about at the beginning regarding Yanos and, and uh, his, his, his problem and ways we can help him. So with that, my friends, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.